Hi, it's Jaraz and Jovan here for another exclusive deep dive as part of Black Enterprises Inside the Studio. Today, we're going inside the Time to Go campaign with actress and TV personality, Holly robinson Pete. The screen star is well known and regarded for her work raising awareness on causes like autism and Parkinson's disease. Now she's partnered with Eurovin Sciences to help bring awareness to the symptoms and management options for overactive bladders. So join me in welcoming Ms. Holly robinson Pete. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, and we also have another special guest. I'm sorry, it's with uh, the doctor's name. Yeah, Dr. Ashley Tapscott. I'm a urologist and your advanced spokesperson. Nice to meet you both. Nice. Okay, so tell us about the Time to Go campaign and um, for Holly, like what inspired your involvement? You know, I was having uh, some symptoms of urgency, having to go, leaking, frequency. And these were things that, that I thought were just because I have four kids, because I'm becoming a certain age. Menopause is wearing me out. Like it's so I thought, oh, just a natural part of the aging. But I they got kind of severe and chronic. And then I realized, um, let me mention this to my doctor. And when I did, he was like, Oh, I think you have overactive bladder or OAB. And I was like, Well, that explains a lot. And then I just started looking for options to treat it. Okay. And um so um, what are some stigmas that we have around OAB and, you know, how are ways that society can overcome them? Well, first of all, it's not, you know, a super sexy thing to talk about, you know, to everyone about your bladder. A lot of people don't want to hear about that. But fortunately, we have doctors like Dr. Tapscott who, who, who help us understand and process what is going on. And I think like 33 million, how many people? Yeah, over 33 million Americans, men and women, all ages, you know, adult Americans. So it's very important. And, and like, you know, like Holly said, I think it's important for us to know what's going on in our bodies. And sometimes we need that special teams coach to kind of, you know, really draw those concerns out because, you know, Holly can tell you, she managed these symptoms for years. On, on average, patients wait over three and a half years to bring this condition up to their doctor. And that's, that's suffering for too long for these patients. And we think we can just push through, right? We're working moms. We just doing what we do. And it's like, oh, I just have to go a lot. I would be on set in, in movies and, you know, uh, wearing layers of clothes, like in not convenient bathrooms. And it would be stressful to me right. um, because I would always need to find somewhere to go like way more often than it felt to me as normal. So um, but yeah, these, these are things that we push through. And then finally, you know, took me a couple of years to, to actually ask a doctor about it. And what are some early symptoms to look out for? Well, I can speak medically. So, you know, this is a very overactive bladder is a very well-recognized medical condition. So there's three main hallmark symptoms. Number one would be urinary frequency. So going more than eight times in 24 hours. Urgency, which is that sudden, you know, undeferable need, got to go, got to go, got to get to the bathroom. And then that's with and without, you know, incontinence or leakage episodes. And this is an involuntary reaction that you really can't control no matter how hard you try. So again, you know, Holly can speak to her management strategies and, and what she did either on set or in her personal life, you know, that really impacted her uh, in terms of seeking treatment. I mean, I would always try to, you know, scope out a place first, a restaurant where are the bathrooms, you know, being far away because I had to go. And when you have to go, you got to go. This, this campaign is called Time to Go. And I love the title of it because it just really hits the spot. Like it really talks about exactly what it is, time to go. And when you're on, like I, you know, I am on sets a lot and there's not sometimes bathrooms nearby right. or there's a two banger or something that you have to walk to. Um, and so it became very stressful for me. Yeah. And um, how early age-wise is this something that someone can kind of look out for those symptoms? Because like Holly was saying, she she assumed at first that it was just because of her age. Is this something that only happens as you get older? Or if you are a bit younger, you can kind of start to notice some symptoms early on. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. I, this does, bladder, bladder health does not discriminate against anyone between races, between ages, between sexes. So this is a bladder muscle, right? Your bladder is a balloon. It has two functions, it stores and it empties. And the problem is, is when that muscle is overactive, it involuntarily contracts and you just can't control it. You cannot argue with your bladder. 
So, you know, and, and Holly can attest to that, certainly. So when we're trying to do all these busy things as moms, as working professionals, um, as great citizens of our communities, you know, this is something that, that can affect everyone from, from 18 and older and adults. But by the way, I did have some arguments with my bladder. Oh, you did? Yes. I was cussing my bladder out. <laughs> um, but you can't be careful with it, though. It's, right. it's, it's, it's going to beat it you was. every time. Yeah. It's going to beat you unless you have Jim Tatsa. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, for me, um, this is, you know, this raised the red flag for me because I, I know if I consume certain things, be it like too much water, fruit, or if I've been drinking, it's a wrap. It's like, it's impossible at times, at points for me to hold my bladder. And like anyone who knows me knows this. They're like, oh, Drowson got to use the bathroom. Um, <laughs> so now when, you know, when I hear about this, it's like, is this something that I should pay more attention to? Am I already showing early signs of OAB? Yes, ma'am. Well, as Miss Holly taught me, 10-1 is like my new, my new uh, moment. That's when you say you have to go to the bathroom on set, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, it's 10-1. They, they started to call me, nickname yeah. me. They're like, oh, she's 10-1. She's 10-1. <laughs> and they started calling me 10-1. I was like, no, we're not, I'm not getting that nickname. That's not cute. But there are, there are bladder irritants, as you said. So yes, obviously, you know, what, what we put in our bodies has to come out in one way or another, you know, not to be, you know, sexy about it, but but caffeine, alcohol, spicy foods, there are certain spices, different things can affect the bladder and your bladder health and can make you go more frequently. The concern for me with patients is sometimes patients need to take a certain amount of fluids uh, in daily or they take medications. And sometimes people limit their fluids. They don't drink or they don't stay hydrated because they're afraid they're gonna have to go to the bathroom, we're gonna have to pull over, stop our commute, et cetera. And when the urine actually gets concentrated, that's an irritant to the bladder as well. So it really is a full circle kind of moment. Well, this is great information to know. <laughs> um, so this is definitely um, a good campaign. And what what will we be able to get out of this campaign? Well, the Time to Go campaign is really set up to provide awareness of OAB and to, to talk about the symptoms and to really just, you know, give you some guidance and some tools to help process this. And that's why I really think this is a very good campaign because I... I think if I looked up and seen, you know, somebody else like me talking about it publicly, I would have been like, oh, you know what? That's me. Yeah. And then to be able to just click on time to go.com and be able to see those, that information and how you can connect with that or not. And just encouraging people to go ask their doctors, you know, and ask them what, what do these symptoms mean? Because mm -hmm. this has been a difficult situation for me, me personally. It was really hard for me to figure out how to map out my day around where is the bathroom. So, <laughs> so I, I think the campaign is super functional and very and really goes to open the dialogue about OAB in a way that's, you know, very approachable. Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, this is my first time like talking about it. <laughs> so for sure. Um, and Holly, you've always been a natural advocate, uh, like I mentioned, um, and used your platform for spreading awareness with autism, Parkinson's, how do you feel? And you've been doing it for some time, you know? So how yeah. do you feel about the level of awareness now compared to like uh, about a decade or ago when you really kind of been a champion for this? Well, it's actually been two decades because RJ was diagnosed in 2000. Mm -hmm. So now it's, man, like when I think about it, do that math, I'm like, it's 2023. So it's been a couple of decades. I've noticed a big difference. Well, the biggest difference is the prevalence, right? Back then, autism prevalence when RG was little, I want to say it was one in 200, maybe one in 150. And now it's one in 44. So they're, we're getting some better diagnosis for autism, but we're also missing certain things too. And there's still stigma. But I do feel like we're moving, the biggest changes for me, I've seen we're moving from autism awareness to autism acceptance. And I think that is really powerful. But we still got a little ways to go. I remember when Archie was first diagnosed, I started telling my friends, my very educated girlfriends would be like, is it contagious? So that's where we were back then. And I do think there's still a lot of that ignorance and, and stigma around. And, you know, you know, us Pete's are going to be out there. One thing we're going to do is tell, talk about it and normalize neurodiversity. And I'm always saying I wouldn't change RJ for the world, but I would try to change the world for RJ. And so just getting out there and talking to the world, talking to people to let them know, um, you know, that these 
people and these families are beautiful folks and we just need to be more kind and accepting, patient and loving. Definitely, definitely. Um, I saw that you were recently honored um, for your work with the Holly Rod Foundation. How does that feel? Like, you know, because I could tell that this is something that comes natural to you, but did you see this for yourself and how does it feel to be recognized for your work? I love, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't do this for awards, but to get a war, an award at the, the Beloved Community Awards from the King Center, Martin Luther King on Martin Luther King weekend, I was so overwhelmed. And for me, what it does, it's obviously a great moment and it's great to be recognized, but it just gives me more fuel because doing nonprofit work, nonprofit work and, and advocacy is hard. It's hard because you got to continuously creatively beg for sponsors and all kinds of things like that. And so getting that was great and then getting it for Holly Rod and for the philanthropy was was extra special from Bernice King, Dr. Bernice King, who's uh, uh, Martin Luther King's daughter. So it was amazing. That's great. And now on the TV side, I'm actually really looking forward to Queens Court. Um, I saw you look glamorous on the red carpet and you and your husband are hosting. This is going to be so interesting. You and your husband, Rodney Pete, are hosting Queens Court where Tamar Braxton, Evelyn Lozada, and Nivea, they're trying to find love. <laughs> What was this experience like? What what was it like? I need to know. It was a hoop. When I tell you, we laughed. We had the best time. We laughed. We cried. We, we got very emotional. You know, when they asked us to do it, I thought, you know, Rodney and I would be good at this. We've been married for 150 years, right? We've been up. We've been down. We've had all kinds of issues, but we, we, we're still here. We're not going anywhere. And we felt like as long as we could be proactive with the ladies, that they were open to talking to us about things. We don't know everything, yeah. but we've seen some things. And they were just very, they were like little sisters to us. Like they were very open. And then we brought these men in this, you know, the house and it was fun. It was fun and it was successful. So yeah, that's yeah. all I can say. But I love that. I hope we can do another, another uh, cycle. I haven't seen it yet. And I'm already hoping for another one. Um, yeah. With the experience, like, did it reshape your relationship at all or even just your understanding of dating? Well, you know, we, we've been out of the dating game for almost 30 years. So we, we, we don't know, we have no game anymore, right? So we, we had to learn about, you know, sort of, you know, what it's like to get out there. And what I related to the ladies about is they're all over 40, right? I'm a little older than them, but I thought, man, I have to get back out there today. What would I be looking for? You know, how would I, so Rodney and I get in there and we, 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 uh, we give advice and we do a little couples counseling, you know, we are not certified counselors, but we, we talk to them and, and because we care, so we were very invested in these women finding love. Well, I'm excited. Thank you very much. So just tell us where can we, uh, go to find more information on the time to go campaign. You can go, yeah. go ahead. Time to go.com. So there's educational information. There's resources on behavior modifications and all of the things that we can do, you know, to help patients with overactive bladder. Like you said, you may not recognize you have a problem. Let's, you know, commend Miss Holly for her authenticity and her bravery. You know, I think it takes a lot. You know, I have so many patients that come by and say, I never would have known or I never would have spoken up if someone didn't say this. So again, we need to normalize healthcare awareness. Sometimes we're poor healthcare advocates. Women are sometimes better than men, you know, historically. Uh, African American population, Latino population, sometimes historically, uh, you know, has these disparities as well. There's sometimes in the community, it's just not out, outspoken enough. So the authenticity and bravery of her, you know, willing to kind of be a bladder ambassador uh, is to be commended. So yeah. go to time to know.com and, uh, and we'll find some resources. Well, looking forward to it. I'm probably, I, I'm pretty sure I'll get some something out of it. And um, thank you. Thank you, ladies, for your awesome. work. Thank campaign. you so much.